Welcome back to Sermon on CT Prep. Today we're going to tackle chapter 7, which is manipulating and solving equations. And we're going to tackle the chapter exercises. Alright, let's look at the uh, question 1. If a plus b is equal to negative 2, what is a plus b to the power of 3? Okay, so we can just substitute negative 2 here. And that will give us 8, negative 8. For what value of n is n minus 4 to the power of uh, 2 is equal to n plus 4 squared. So the answer should be obvious just by looking at it because the only possible answer for n should be 0 because if 0, negative 4 squared is equal to 0 plus 4 squared, this will lead us to get negative 4 squared plus is equal to 4 squared. And since negative 4 squared is equal to 16, the answer is 0. Or we could also solve this by expanding. So we've got negative 4, negative 4 is equal to n plus 4, n plus 4. And if we expand this uh, equation, we've got n squared minus 8n plus 16, n squared plus 8n plus 16. And if we add this together, we got 16n is equal to 0. So n is 0. Number 3, if 1 over a times b over c is equal to 1, what is the value of b minus ac? So if you multiply this equation, we got b over ac is equal to 1, right? And b is then equal to ac. So is so because we moved this over here. So if b is equal to ac, then b minus ac must be equal to 0. So the answer is b. If 3x mi minus 8 is equal to negative 23, what is the value of 6x minus 7? So if 3x minus 8 is equal to negative 23, we can move that 8 to the other side to get 3x minus is equal to negative 15. And if we multiply both sides, we get 6x is equal to negative 30, right? So we can just substitute that into here. We got negative 30 minus 7, which is negative 37. So the answer is B. If 4 over 9 is equal to 8 over 3, M, what is the value of M? So what we can do here is to cross multiply. Very simple. We'll get 12 is equal to 72 M, and M is equal to 1 over 6. If 3X plus 1 is equal to negative 8, what is the value of X plus 2 to the power of 3? <clears throat> so, 3x plus 1 is equal to 8, negative 8. So, let's try to find x. 3x is equal to negative 9, so x is equal to negative 3. And x plus 2 to the power of 3. So, since x is negative 3, you can just simplify, substitute x as negative 3 here, plus 2 to the power of 3. And we know that negative 3 plus 2 is one, negative 1. And negative 1 to the power of 3 is negative 1. If 4 over k plus 2 is equal to x over 3, where k cannot be equal to negative 2, what is k in terms of x? So what we can do here, again, is to cross multiply, which will lead us to get 12 is equal to kx plus 2x. Now we can just solve for k. So k is equal to 12 minus 2x over x. If x minus 3 squared is equal to 36 and x is greater than, is less than 0, what is the value of x squared? So, okay. So, what we should know is that to, for this equation to be equal to 36, it must be negative 6. So, that only happens when x is negative 3. Thus, x squared would be negative would be negative three squared, which is nine. The formula above gives the future value of f of an annuity based on the monthly payment p in the interest, the interest rate i, and the number of months n. Which of the following gives p in terms of f, i, and n? So, we can just rewrite this. So 
all we can do here is to simplify this by multiplying i to the side okay now we need to find p so we can just move this to the side and since we're doing that we have to divide so it's fi over 1 plus i n minus 1 which is equal to p so the answer is a if m over 2n is equal to 2, what is the value of n over 2n? So we can just multiply both sides by 2 to get m over n is equal to 4 from here, from here, which means that n over m is equal to 1 over 4 because it's the reciprocal. Then n over 2m should be 1 over 4 times 1 over 2, right? So that will give us 1 over 8. If x is less than 0 and x squared minus 12 is 4, what is the value of x? So if x squared minus 12 is equal to 4, then x squared must be equal to 16. So x is either 4 or negative 4. And since x must be less than 0, it must be negative 4. Always remember that uh, if you have x squared over 6 is equal to a certain number, then there is a positive and negative result. Okay, question 12, if x squared plus 7 is equal to 21, what is the value of x squared plus 3? So, again, x squared is equal to, if you move this to this side, 14. And x squared plus 3 is then 14 plus 3, which will give us 17. x squared uh, brackets x to the power of 4 minus 9 is equal to 8x to the power of 4. We can guess and check, but we can also just expand this by foiling, which will give us x to the power of 6 minus 9x squared. And we can move this to the side, negative 8x to the power of 4 is equal to 0. And then we can just simplify it further. x squared, we can, uh, this would be x to the power of 4 minus 8x to the power of, squared, power of 2 minus 9 is equal to 0 and then now uh, we can further simplify this uh, x squared minus 9 x squared plus 1 is equal to 0 because these two will multiply to be negative 9 and add to be negative 8 and then we can further simplify this to x plus 3 x minus 3 and x squared plus 1 is equal to 0 and because x is greater than 0, x must be 3 for this equation to be true. So the answer should be 3. 14. If 2 root x plus 4 over 3 is equal to 6 and x must be greater than 0, what is the value of x? Okay. So we can just move 3 to the side. 2 root x plus 4 is equal to 18. So x plus 4, root x plus 4 is equal to 9. And x plus 4, in order to get rid of the square root, we need to multiply, we need to square both sides, which will give us 81. So x is equal to 77. Okay, if x is, is, is greater than 0, for what value of x is the equation above true? Okay, so what we should do here is we can bring the uh, numbers to one side and the variables to the other. So if you put this here and put this here, we'll get 10 is equal to 5 over 3 root x. And now we can move 3 over here. No, we can just move this over here. So we'll get 6 is equal to root x. So x is equal to the root 6 because we need to square both sides. Okay, if 8 plus 5x is twice x minus 5, what is the value of x? Okay, 8 plus 5x is, greater, is equal to 2x minus 5, because twice, we can just solve this by expanding 2x minus 10, and put the x to one side and the numbers to the other, and then we'll get x is equal to negative 6. If x over 6 is equal to x plus 12 over 42, what is the value of 6 over x? We can nearly do the same thing, but this time we should cross multiply. So we get 42x is equal to 6x plus 72. 
and put the x to the one to one side or 6x is equal to 72 this is familiar we get x is equal to 2. now 6 over x is equal to 6 over 2 is equal to 3 because x is equal to 2. the answer is c Doctors use Colling's rules shown above to determine the right dosage D in milligrams of medication for a child based on the adult dosage of A in milligrams and the child's age C in years. Ben is a patient who is in need of a certain medication. If a doctor uses Colling's rule to prescribe Ben a dosage that is half the adult's dosage, what is Ben's age in years? All right, so let's write this equation that we got above here. And we know that Ben's dosage is half the adult's dosage, so D is equal to A over, a over 2. And now we can substitute. So we can move A to this side. Oops. And we'll get 1 over 2 is equal to C plus 1 over 24. Move 24 to this side. 12 is equal to c plus 1, and c is equal to 11. So the answer is 11. If 3x minus 2y minus 3z is equal to 0, which of the following expresses x in terms of y and z? Okay, so let's just expand 3x minus two, uh, 6y minus 3z is equal to 0. And we need to express x in terms of y and z, so let's just separate x from the rest. So x is equal to 2y plus z. So the answer is b. If the equation above is true for all values, real values of y, what must the value of x be? Okay. So again, what we can do here is to group the y's together. So here we get x, y plus y squared plus 1. We're grouping, and then negative y squared plus 1 is equal to 0. And then, now we have y squared plus 1, x minus 1, okay, is equal to 0. And y squared plus 1 is always positive, so x must be 1. Questions 21 22 refer to the following information in the figure above. Two objects are connected by a string which is threaded through a pulley. Using its weight, object 2 moves object 1 along a flat surface. The acceleration of two objects can be determined by the following formula. For m1, m2 are the masses of object 1 and object 2 respectively. In kilograms, g is the acceleration due to gravity measured in m over a sec uh, second squared and u is a constant known as the coefficient of friction which of the following expresses u in terms of the other variables so here all we can do is just simply rearrange it so we can just get rid of this hassle by multiplying here a m1 plus m2 is equal to m2g minus u m1g okay now we can uh, subtract m2g so, so we'll get a m1 plus m2 subtract by m2g is equal to negative u m1g and now since we want it for u we can just divide by this one so u will be equal to m2g minus a m1 plus m2 over m1g the answer is C. If the masses of both object in one and two are doubled, how would the acceleration of the two objects be affected? Okay, so if it doubled, we can just rewrite the equation with two m two g minus u two m one g is equal to two m one plus two m two, and because the twos will cancel out. When we ex we we write this with a common f as like terms with commons, so if we just expand the two here, two m two g minus u m one g 
over 2 brackets m1 plus m2, we can see that the 2s will cancel out. So it will be the same as the acceleration of the old equation. So the acceleration will stay the same. Okay, questions 23 to 24 refer to the following information. V is equal to P brackets 1 minus R over T. The value of V of a car depreciates over T years according to the formula above where P is the original price and R is the annual rate of depreciation. 23 states that we need to find the following expression uh, that expresses R in terms of V, P, and T. So like we did before, we just need to uh, rewrite this equation for R. So here we can just write V over P is equal to 1 over R T. And here's a bit of a tricky bit to separate the uh, t squared over uh, to 1 minus r to the power of t. We can just square root by t over here. And that will lead us to have 1 minus r on this side. And then now we can just solve for r by um, putting 1 to the other side. So we t, t over p, 1 minus t, v over p t root v over p. So the answer should be a. If a car depreciates to a value equal to half its original price after five years, then which of the following is the closest to the car's annual rate of depreciation? So from the previous question, we know that the rate is equal to 1 minus t root v over p, and v should be equal to half of p, because it's half of its original price, so v over p is equal to 1 over 2 thus r is equal to 1 minus 5 because the time is 5 1 over 2 so if you put this in a calculator we should be getting 0 0.13 that is it for today thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for the next chapter thank you